Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you because you've given us the interest to always appear before you at a time like this to study your word. We pray that this interest will bear fruit in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. That as you are promised to reward those who are diligently seeking after you, that you'll reward us with the things that are promised to the true seekers in Jesus' name. Reveal your truth, your mind to us today. And we pray that what you reveal will make us successful and victorious in our personal Christian lives and in the ministries you have committed into our hands. Father, we pray that you will grant each of us the victory that you have promised. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to see tonight the great beneficial lessons we have in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, verses 8 to 20. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, verses 8 to 20. And he, referring to Paul, and he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly, for the space of three months disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spoke evil of that way, before the multitude he departed from them, and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews' exorcists took upon them to cast over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. And there were several sons of one scaver, a Jew, and chief of the priests which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burnt them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed we have been studying the events and the manifestation of power in the early church through members of the early church and through appointed ministers of the early church and we have noticed that in the early church the believers developed their faith and that helped in keeping out some problems from their own families and from their fellowships. According to the promise of Jesus Christ, the normal, regular believers who are not appointed as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, or teachers, just members of the church, these were supposed to go out in great power and be great soul winners. The whole church was supposed to have part in the great commission, fulfilling what the Lord wanted, reaching out to the world, saving the lost. In Mark chapter 16, 
reading from verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. As we have noticed before, and as we have taught regularly for many years in this church, that is given to the whole church. That the moment you are born again, you must understand that we cannot wait for people like Paul. We cannot wait for people like Peter alone to get the work done, to publish the great and uh, the good tidings. But the whole church must carry the word out and tell the sinners, the seekers, that Jesus Christ died to save. He said, go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. We have always emphasized reaching every creature. And that the apostles alone, the prophets alone, the evangelists alone, the pastors and the teachers alone cannot reach every creature. You must play your part. And Jesus said in verse 17, He that, uh, that these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take off serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and sat on the right hand of God, and they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following in Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 we see one of the instances of the fulfillment of this the ordinary while talking in human language the ordinary normal believers in the church carrying out the great commission going out with the gospel message preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ becoming great soul winners and the Lord walking with them in Acts chapter 8 reading from verse 1 and Saul was consenting unto his death unto Stephen's death and at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. In the early church, the believers in the church that were scattered in different places went everywhere preaching the word. Because Jesus lived on the inside of them, they could talk about Christ. Because they had faith in God, they could lead others to believe in God through Jesus Christ. Because they had been saved, they could easily explain to other people how they were saved and how they could be saved. Because they knew God was not willing, and still is not willing, that anybody should perish, but that is patient concerning everyone that will come to repentance because they know that they can tell people that God loves them and that God wants them to be saved through Jesus Christ now. And that's what they did. They went everywhere preaching the word. Now we're told from verse 5 of an individual, not an apostle, not a prophet, not an evangelist at that time, not a pastor, not a teacher, just a deacon in the church, a worker in the church. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Let's stop there. In the early church, the pastors, the teachers, the preachers, never made the believers to feel that they couldn't preach the gospel. There was no restriction. If they had been preaching negatively to the members of the church for a long, long time, after they were scattered, they will not be able to do what they did. But because there had been no restrictive preaching, negative preaching, telling the members of the church that they couldn't preach the gospel, because of that, when they went out, they had the boldness, the faith, 
the freedom and the liberty to preach the gospel. They believed that God was no respecter of persons, that what God had done with those apostles in Jerusalem, he was able to do with everyone. Philip without fear. Philip full of faith, full of power, full of the Holy Ghost. He took up that challenge and we're told he preached Christ to the people of Samaria. And the people with one accord gave he to those things which he spoke, because they saw and they heard of the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and taken with many with their pulses, and that were lean, they were healed. And there was great joy in that city. But then, let's understand. With the apostles, people like Peter, like John, like Paul, and others, with those apostles, they exercised special authority. Special extraordinary miracles were performed through them. All the believers could pray and receive miracles. All the believers could preach and get results. But from the record of the Bible, from the record of the Acts of the Apostles, there were special miracles that were performed through those apostles that were not performed through the ordinary members of the church. And that confirms what we have been saying a lot of times, that we must be all soul winners, but we cannot all be evangelists. We must all be preachers of the truth, but we are not all pastors in the church. We must all be working for the Lord, but we are not all ordained, appointed, anointed workers or messengers in the church. You see, the confusion may arise. When you take the outreach to evangelize, to win souls, when you take that to mean that every member of the church can become an apostle. No, the Bible states very clearly, and it gave some apostles, not everybody, and it gave some prophets, it gave some evangelists, teachers, workers of miracles in special ways, as it has pleased him. God set them in the church. And even though all of us should have, must have, a ministry reaching out to unbelievers around us, there are apostles appointed, anointed by God for special ministry. And in the case of Peter and Paul, we can see this, and in the case of the other apostles as well. Acts chapter 5, from verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. By the hands of the apostles, all the believers could pray and receive answers. All the believers could pray and get results. All the believers could preach and get souls saved. All the believers must be soul winners. But God works and performs special miracles through the apostles, the appointed ones. In verse 15, in so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. That was special. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed everyone. Acts chapter 19. Verses 11 and 12. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. There are miracles. There are special miracles. There are signs. There are spectacular signs. There are wonders. There are out of the ordinary, extraordinary wonders. And God, by his appointed, anointed servants, could choose to do things that are out of the way, extraordinary, spectacular. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body, 
were brought unto the sea, and kerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them. And the evil spirits, even evil spirits, without the presence of Paul, just by the clothes touching them, these evil spirits went out of them. What does the epistle say in explaining those things I've read to you now? Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. Truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. That is, these special miracles, these extraordinary supernatural acts were restricted to the apostles and the special messengers appointed by God. God has always granted special signs to those who are anointed and appointed for special ministries all through the scriptures until today as well. Now, as you have read the passage from verse 8 to verse 20, you would have seen that there were problems, but it's worthy of note to understand that whatever the problems, the persecutions, the oppositions were in the early church, the apostles and the early church were always committed to the preaching of the gospel. They never allowed problems to hinder them. Problems of finance, for example. Problems of poverty. Problems of lack of accommodation. Problems of the venue to be able to have a program. They never allowed physical problems, family problems, social problems to hinder them or restrict the spreading of the gospel. After Paul administered the baptism in the Holy Spirit to the twelve disciples at Ephesus, which we studied last Monday, he went into the synagogue to proclaim Jesus Christ and his kingdom to the multitude. And later when there was a problem, he didn't allow that to hinder him or to stop him all completely. He moved to his school to continue a daily Bible study. And from there, the whole of Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now from verse 8 to verse 10, the school after the synagogue. That is, he was in a synagogue first, but then later he went to his school, the school premises. Verse 8, and he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. We have always noted that Paul the Apostle went to the synagogue. The first place he will go to when he got to a city, a town, was a synagogue. But I want you to notice here, as many of us as are looking up to God, saying, Oh Lord, I want to have great opportunities in preaching the gospel from city to city. From a place to another place. We were talking last week on the Spirit of the Lord. Have you received the Spirit of God? The Holy Ghost since he believed? And I told you last week, he is a Spirit of truth. He is a Spirit of power. The Spirit of Christ. The Spirit of God. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. And if you do not have wisdom in particular... You'll ruin the ministry that God is trying to give you. And you will ruin the opportunities that you are having. Understand, when you use an opportunity effectively, when you have an opportunity and it is used properly, it opens you up to other opportunities. The synagogue in those days were very difficult uh, places to preach in. Because they believed in the rituals and the sacrifices and the ceremonies of the Old Testament. And Paul the Apostle was going about telling them that all those rituals and ceremonies now will not save. The sacrifices that they meant nothing after the death of Jesus Christ. They didn't want to hear that. He was telling them that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, appointed by God. The final sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice. He has come and there is no need for another sacrifice again. They didn't want to hear that. And yet, he went into that synagogue and he spoke boldly by the space of three months. 
if he had not used wisdom, he will not be allowed for two weeks. When you go to preach anywhere, church, building, a bus, in a community, in another town, or outside the country, yes, you must speak boldly, but wisely. Boldness and foolishness will uh, equal failure. You know, there are people that say, I'm very, very bold. Well, make sure you are wise with being bold. Because if you are bold and foolish, you will result in failure. But because of the spirit of wisdom within him, he spoke wisely and boldly, and he was allowed for three months, disputing and persuading, telling them from scriptures in the Old Testament the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spoke evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them. A preacher must have wisdom to know when his ministry in a particular place is being rendered ineffective. And he must know if he wants to keep on being effective, how to move out of that area where there is hardening where there is opposition against the truth, where there is a rejection of the gospel message, he must know when to move out and go to a place where the gospel will be preached unhindered. When many people, different people were hardened and they believed not, and they spoke evil of the message he was given, even before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples. Notice that. There are people that will accuse a man like Paul of sheep stealing. Or they will say that he just told members of the synagogue away to go and start um, his own church. No. All those people that were in the synagogue before they were not born again. They were members of the synagogue but not born again. They didn't know Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Paul came in there and he preached the gospel unto them. And when the synagogue became hardened, many of the people there, and he needed to continue preaching the gospel, he got all these believers apart. And he got the school premises of one Tyrannus and went on teaching them. And this continued for two years. He continued there for two years. Now, you need to understand that, again, the wisdom is very great in Paul the Apostle. Because... If you read the whole chapter, you'll see that the city of Ephesus was given to idolatry completely. There was a type of, there was an idol, Diana of the Ephesians, that was accepted by the whole city. And you know, if you were a preacher, and you knew that an idol was accepted by a whole city, if you were foolish, if you didn't have the wisdom of God, you'll be knocking at that idol every day that you preach. And the workers in the city council, because um, the government at that time was not divorced with the idol in the city. If you read the whole story in the chapter, you will understand that. The workers in the city council would have run you out of town. It takes wisdom. Wisdom. Not just knowledge. Wisdom. Love. To be able to preach the gospel and remain in that city of idolatry for two years and yet not be sent out of that city. So that all they that dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Now you've seen Paul the Apostle preaching in his synagogue. You have also seen Paul the Apostle preaching in his school premises. Let's take up that issue. Now, unknown, unknowingly to us, because of the heritage of the protestant church and also because of the heritage of the long-standing catholic church the average mind thinks that if you are going to preach the gospel anytime it must be in a completed building in a cathedral in a place that is very stately and solid and we have neglected the information the abundance of information given to us in the new testament that in fact, the preaching of the gospel can be carried on in all available places. And for us as students of the Bible, not just ordinary Christians, not just born-again people, 
not just ordinary believers but bible students students of the world you must understand that you can preach we can preach the gospel in every available place now let's run through the new testament and see a few of the places mark chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 and again he entered into Capernaum after some days and it was noise that he was in the house and straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them no not so much as about the door and he preached the word unto them oh you see why do we need to emphasize something like this by the grace of God we already have a church building here in um, this wonderful part of the city so why should we be emphasizing the point that we can preach the gospel in a house understand that this church has been given the great commission go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature it may happen that next week or next month or next year or sometime you are sent out to go and preach the gospel and uh, you must understand that you are not just to be looking for a cathedral you are not just to be looking for a synagogue you are not just to be looking for a temple any available space you can have hundreds of people thousands of people and preach the gospel look at jesus christ the very son of god he, he, the son of god that had authority and power and anointing of the holy ghost and yet in a house cathedral yes when it's available synagogue yes when it's available and uh, a tabernacle yes when it's available when all those ones are not available when the city hall is not available when the theater is not available then a house in acts chapter 10 acts chapter 10 verse 22 they said Cornelius the centurion a just man one that feareth God and of good report among all the nations of the Jews was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house into his house to hear the words of thee verse 24 and the morrow after they entered into Caesarea and Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends in verse 33 immediately therefore i sent to thee and thou hast done well that thou art come now therefore are we all here present before god to hear all things that are commanded thee of god verse 44 while peter yet spake in that house these words the holy ghost fell on all them which heard the word that means then effectively we can use a house in the preaching of the gospel in fact you can use that house for months even for years if need be have um, everything that ought to be done there if there is no cathedral and if there is no synagogue then we can use religious buildings religious buildings like temple like synagogue like whatever it's called if it's a building that is dedicated entirely to the preaching of the bible one way or the other that's a religious building it can be used matthew chapter 4 verse 23 and jesus went about all galilee teaching in their synagogues religious buildings teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people but then when a synagogue is not available a house normal living apartment is not available what else can we use a plain open field matthew chapter 15 matthew chapter 15 reading from verse 29 and Jesus departed from thence and came nigh unto the sea of Galilee and went up into a mountain and sat down there and great multitudes these were thousands of people in this particular case 4,000 men without counting the women and the children verse 30 and great multitudes came unto him 
having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet. And he healed them in so much that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, and um, the blind to see, and he glorified the God of Israel. Then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. And his disciples say unto him, When should we, when should we have so much bread in the wilderness? as to feel so to feel so great a multitude it was a wilderness like just a bush and he cleared that plain open field and then jesus sat on a particular mountain that he could have a view of the whole people and he preached unto them as to the number we are told in verse 38 they that did eat were four thousand men beside without counting the women and the children that means then Christian meetings can go on, preaching can go on, the publishing of the gospel can go on, even when the members um, increase to thousands, and you can use uh, that place regularly, every Sunday, every Thursday, every Monday if you want to, every Saturday if you want to, even, even though it's an open field, we must understand that the power of God will continue to move, whether it's a synagogue or a house or the open field or a seaside or even a school premises. In Acts chapter 19 verse 9, when divers were hiding and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily, preaching daily, convincing them daily in the school of one Tyrannus. And so we must understand that whether it's a palace or in a prison, in a market or on the, on the mountainside, it doesn't matter to Christ and it shouldn't matter to the church of Christ. We must preach the word in every place and God will confirm his word with signs following. Now verses 11 and 12. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick and cashes, or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Now, the church is to be built on the power of God. The church is not to be built on the ability to speak well, the church is not to be built on the wisdom of man. The church is not to be built on the professional things in the church, but to be built on the power of God. Now, all these things that we're studying, it's wonderful when you have, a, when you have real understanding of the Bible. And if you're a preacher, if you didn't have the right understanding of the Bible, little, little things will make you ineffective, very ineffective. For example... Uh, you read in the memoirs that is in the diary of Charles G. Finney. Charles G. Finney was a refined preacher. He was a lawyer before he became a preacher. Because of that, he was used to things that are orderly and normally handled and good singing. But there were some occasions they went to a particular place to, sing, um, to preach. And the singing will bother him so much that he'll put his hands um, in his ears because the singing will be so bad. But you see, the church is not built on singing, orchestration, uh, music, or um, other things like that. The church is built on the power of God. Now you can see a ministry like this, the ministry of Paul the Apostle, that God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons. And the places the handkerchiefs and the aprons were taken to, Paul was not even there. An orchestra wasn't there. Music wasn't there. Singing wasn't there. A good chorus leader wasn't there. All the other things that people look for to make a particular place of worship very nice. All those things were not there. But the power of God was there. And the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Where the crusade at Ibadan, 
and um, well, uh, learned music for a long, long time. I, I love music and I appreciate good music. And when the music is bad, in the past it used to disturb me. It will disturb my preaching, disturb my uh, connection of thoughts because I really love uh, good music. But I began to understand the Bible that it's the power, not the music. If the music is there, thank God. If it's not there, well, forget it. But it's the power of God. And we went to Ibadan to have that crusade. In fact, the choruses were so bad that the newspapers that wrote about the crusade, they commented on the choruses. And they said, this is a deeper life. They're having a meeting like this. And the singing was very, very bad. Even somebody, a journalist writing from outside. And yet, the power of God was wonderful. That even though the music wasn't good, but the dependence of the minister was not on the music. In fact, um, when, any time I was there, it was so clear to me. And they went on singing, sometimes 30 minutes, sometimes more than that. And it was terrible. Very, very bad. But thank God for the power of God. Now you can see here that it says, from the hands of Paul, God wrought special miracles and something similar to this happened. I told you before, but let me just repeat it because in, of in connection with the study. That there was a mad woman at Ibora, far away from Ibadan. The woman was not at the crusade, but a concerned man brought the clothes of that mad woman at Ibora. While we were praying at the crusade, he spread the clothes while before God, while the prayer was going on. After two weeks of the great miracle crusade at the Liberty Stadium at Ibadan, then he took that close to uh, the to the man that to the woman that had the mental problem and the mental problem vanished away instantaneously. That's a special miracle. Because it doesn't happen like that every day. It doesn't happen like that with everybody. And we have seen miracles like this, and it's all over the Bible, with specially appointed ministers of God. When it happens in our church, we ought to glorify God, that God is doing with our church, in our church, what he did in days gone by. Let's look at Second Kings, chapter 13. Second Kings... Chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. And Elisha died, and they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. And it came to pass, as they were burying a man, that behold, they spied a band of men. And they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and took up uh, and stood up on his feet. That's a special miracle. Now, it's a special miracle because it doesn't happen every time like that. And when it happens, especially by um, by through God, but through a man of God, then that is a special miracle. Elisha had died. He had been buried. And the, the flesh had even been rotten. But now, when this uh, man was let down, and the man touched the bones of Elisha, then this dead man got up. That is a special miracle. In Mark chapter 5 Mark chapter 5 from verse 25 and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse when she had heard of Jesus came in the press and touched his garment. For she said, If I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Again, that's a special miracle. Special miracle. 
because of the special anointing and because of the appointment of God. In Mark chapter 6 from verse 54. Mark chapter 6 from verse 54. And when they were come out of the ship straightway they knew him and ran through that whole region round about and began to carry about in bed those that were sick where they heard he was. And whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch if it were but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. As many as touched him were made whole. Faith, power, anointing and authority can be so high in an apostle or in a prophet or in an evangelist that God performs spectacular miracles in special simple ways. And we've seen miracles like this since this revival started. I told you before, but let's connect it with the study that we have today. That um, I went to Aba in, I think now it's 1984. And there was a nurse that came to see me that a woman was bleeding so terribly in the hospital. And there was no answer, no, no cure. And she wanted me to pray on that handkerchief so that it would be taken to that woman. I did. And she took the handkerchief to the hospital and touched that woman. That week, the blood stopped and the woman was discharged, healed, perfectly made whole. God has been working these special miracles because of his own power, because of the special uh, appointment that he has on his own people. Let's realize that God can do this whenever he likes with any of his appointed ministers. Now, the sons of Sceva, from verse 13, Acts chapter 19, Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, who but who are ye? Now, in the in verse 12 that we read, it says, Aprons and handkerchiefs were taken from the body of Paul. And then when the aprons and the handkerchief touched the people that were sick, they became healed. When those handkerchiefs Angashis or aprons taught those having evil spirits, the evil spirits departed from them. Why? Because the evil spirit recognized the authority given to the Apostle Paul. Those sicknesses will depart because that authority is recognized. And here they confessed, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. But who are ye? And the evil spirit... Um, and the man in whom the evil spirit was lived on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. We must understand that we're not just to presume into the ministry of the miraculous. There are some young people that do not know how terrible the devil is, how wicked evil spirits are, how dangerous they say it is to get into spiritual things through presumption or pretense. And he'll try to uh, do something to copy a Paul, a Peter, a man of God. But here we have great lessons from this story that we have read. The ministry of the supernatural cannot be entered into with presumption or pretense. That is, you cannot just wake up one day and say, I want to do like um, so-and-so is doing. I want to do like Paul is doing. I want to do like Peter is doing. No. It's a special ministry. And God has said some, not everybody. Let's, let's look at that verse in the uh, New Testament. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, is my divine appointment. 
it's not by human preference saying i like to be an apostle i like my shadow to heal the sick i like my handkerchief to cast out devils i like uh, people to touch me and get this or get that it is by divine appointment because those are special miracles through special ministers appointed specially by god and god set some in the church first apostles secondly prophets thirdly teachers after that he still set some in the church miracles gifts of healing helps governments diversities of tongues he set them are all apostles the answer is no are all prophets the answer is no are all teachers the answer is no are all workers of miracles the answer is obvious it's no in Ephesians chapter 4 Ephesians chapter 4 now there are people that do not like um, teaching like this and because of the pride in the heart oh they'll say well i do not accept that all i believe that whatever i desire yes whatever you desire but balance it with god's perfect will in the church of god there is orderliness there is um, decency in the church of god is the will of the lord that will be done not the will of the person that just want to get out and do whatever he likes in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 and he gave some not everybody he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints not for your pride not for my pride not just to have a great ministry for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ as i said before we can all be soul winners we must be we can all be sharing the te our testimonies we must do that we can share the word of salvation with people around us we must do that we must manifest faith and pray for people in need we must do that but all the same after we have recognized the general ministry of all the members in the church there is the special ministry of god appointed servants of god come back to acts chapter 19. from the thing that happened to these sons of Sceva, prayer groups of sinning exorcists are exposed to dangers of oppression and satanic attack there are some people that specialize according to them casting out devils but they do not know about holiness living above sin and they're not free from the sin of immorality and it's a very terrible sin if you're living in adultery living in fornication immorality and then you try you presume to get to go after evil spirits wanting to cast out evil spirits you see when you are like that that you're living in sin and you do not have a ministry because if you had a ministry you will not be living in sin the moment you get back into sin into fooling around with women into uh, covetousness and love of money and you get into selfishness and pride if you had a ministry before you cannot carry out that ministry in that stage of mind no matter who you are even if you have been called an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, the moment you get into love of money, covetousness, and you fool around with uh, women, and you get involved with living in sin, living in lie, and deceit, and in pride, that time you cannot continue that ministry. The Lord will not work and confirm the word with signs following with such a person. And if you go on in that state, uh, to cast out devils you're exposing yourself to danger now there are people that will say it's not my life that god is looking at god is looking at the blood of jesus christ uh -uh. don't deceive yourself the blood of jesus christ is not going to cover up evil not going to cover up your deceit your lying your pride your covetousness your immorality the blood of jesus is only going to cleanse not cover up cleanse not cover up you know people will say it doesn't matter how i live it matters how you live the apostles were to be people that are, were exemplary in their character in their behavior in the life in which they live and therefore it's very dangerous for prayer groups 
of sinning exorcists and they're still trying to uh, cast out devils while they're living in sin you'll be oppressed by the devil satanic attack will be so terrible that you'll be looking for prayers yourself and then we must understand that prayer is more than saying words many times some people have said well we can go out to pray and they will say uh, father in the name of jesus and then say what somebody has been saying but you know prayer is more than that it takes real faith true faith from a clean heart and then it works in a God-appointed way before it can be effectual. Professional, pretending, powerless prophets, they have nothing to offer you in time of trouble. And if you see prophets or so-called preachers that are living in sin, they leave their wives alone and then uh, be going around with other people's wives, God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he will reap. The power of God cannot continue to work cannot continue to flow through such a person's life. Now, Acts chapter 19 from verse 17. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. It was known. We always encourage our people here that you must make the testimonies known make the miracles publicized if the lord is casting out devils publicize it if the lord is healing the sick publicize it if the lord is um, changing uh, terrible sinners publicize it if the lord is uh, removing incurable diseases publicize it and if the lord is magnifying his holy name that evil powers are confessing jesus i know paul i know publicize it it was known by all the jews and the greeks dwelling at ephesus and fear fell on them all and the name of the lord jesus was magnified you see eventually it will result in the growth of the church it will result in many people wanting to know the lord when you publicize the miracles that are taking place in verse 18 separation from sorcery and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burnt them before all men and he counted the price of them and found it 50 pieces of silver. You see, before we can say we belong to the Lord, we must forsake secret societies. Secret society. And um, I've always mentioned it and I want to repeat it. You see, God has no respect for an individual that will just come to church and will not have any change, will not have any difference at all, will belong to a secret society and will say, I am a member of a gospel church. And you know, sometimes um, unconsciously, erroneously, people go around and they say, I'm a member of Deeper Life Church, Deeper Life Church, as if you are born again, as if you are saved. That's if your life has been totally transformed. And you know sometimes, um, thank God for a church like this. Thank God for a church like this. Like I said at Ibadan on Friday, where I was invited, there were, there were 15 to 20,000 people there. And um, that's not deeper life. It was in another church. But uh, they had heard I was coming. And they were just there in their thousands. And the ministers, the ministers were there on the platform. And I told them that I accepted that invitation because I believed they were going to give me liberty to preach the word of God, liberty to preach the truth of God. And uh, when I said that, the pastor that invited me started clapping his hands and all the people clapped their hands. And I told them I went to a particular place uh, to preach. And the pastor there gave me uh, a prepared outline and said that... Um, this will be very useful to you that uh, tonight when you are preaching i'll be very happy it will help our church if you can use that outline i smiled and got the outline from him and put it away somewhere because early in the morning that day god had given me a message a message of revelation deep deep message that i knew that uh, i knew that something was going to happen in the evening and he gave me a sheet of paper i said thank you i got it from him and then put it somewhere I think after we finished the meeting that night, he must have understood that his outline was useless. Because I, I, I don't use other people's outlines like that. 
I go with what God, you know, gives me to preach to the people. And it doesn't matter whether the people like it, they don't like it, they reject it, they accept it. The servant of the Lord will speak the word of the Lord. And I told the people on Friday that I believe that they invited me because they wanted the truth. And they said yes, and they clapped their hands, and I said okay. And I gave them the word of God. And of course it wasn't things they were used to. Holiness, living above sin, coming out of the world, living a bright, shining life. If you are going to be called a child of God, and without complete repentance and being born again, being a child of God, that one is not really recognized by God. Now I said all that to say this. Now listen to me. We have people we call IFL. We have people we call the house fellowship. We have people that we call uh, the students. We have many, many people. But listen to me. There is nobody who is a member of this church. And there is nobody who is a citizen of the kingdom of God who belongs to a secret society. If you belong to a secret society, and if you are still having magical books and juju rings and all those things with you, and you are coming to this church, just because you are IFL, just because you are manager, you are director, doesn't mean that you are born again. Because until you have repented, giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you have brought all those books, all those magical books, all those things that, um, that are evil of Satan, until you have burnt them, and you have come out of that secret society, you are not born again yet. And if you are not born again, you are not a member of a church like this. But why did I say that? To make you not to deceive yourself. To make you not to say, well, I'm part of them, I'm part of them, and we're going together to the kingdom of God. Oh, no. Now, when you really believe, look at verse 18. And many that believed, they came, they confessed, and they showed their deeds. Many of them also, which use curious arts, brought their books together, and they burnt them before all men. And um, ladies, if you are men, young men, you've been in a familiar spirit cult. And while you are there, you don't use your ring, you, your tie scarf, you dress like uh, the people dress. And you say, oh, thank God, I'm a member of Deeper Life. Uh-uh. Familiar spirit doesn't uh, have anything in Deeper Life. You're not a member. You just come to watch as spectator, like going to the football field. To watch what they are doing there until the time you make up your mind that you have nothing to do with familiar spirit and you genuinely repent not because the prayer warriors are telling you to repent not because somebody is telling you confess confess on your own because you want to get to the kingdom of God because you want to love God because you want to be counted as part of the church of God you bring all those things that you are using you reject all those that were using, all those things that you have swallowed inside you. You vomit them, you cast them away, and you deliberately say, I will not be part of this familiar spirit cult anymore. It's only then that you are actually a child of God and you are part of the church. You know, there are people that are witches and wizards. And um, they, they will go to church. And those people, they can obey any external law. Don't uh, use this. Don't use that. Come every Monday. Come every Thursday. And uh, come on Sunday. Uh, be a worker in the church. Come and be cleaning the church. All those people, which is don't find difficult to come and sweep the church. Which is don't find difficult to be doing this or doing that. But I want to tell you that in this church, if you have not repented... If you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, everything that you do is useless in the sight of God. If you don't give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, well, you say they are calling us uh, to get involved and get involved and get involved um, in the miracle convention. Even though I know that I'm still smoking and drinking and doing this and doing that, well, they are doing that to just encourage you so that you'll hear the word of God and, uh, you know, eventually repent. If you don't repent, you're getting involved in this or that doesn't get you into the kingdom of God. They brought their books together and they burnt everything. And he counted the price of those things. And it was 50,000 pieces of silver. Very, very costly. 
and it sat out all those things were done. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Now listen. The word of God will not grow. The church of God will not grow. If we are not very clear about repentance. If we are not very clear about people using magical books to burn all those books. People that have idols in their houses, burn all those idols. The word of God will not grow and prevail if we are not very clear about uh, coming out of satanic activities and coming totally to embrace the Lord. But they did it. Many, many of them. Many, many of them. And if you are there tonight, I'm believing you'll do that in Jesus' name. That will forsake your evil ways. So tell the Lord, you have now broken away from the devil. You are going to be totally with the Lord. And then my children will grow the word of God and will prevail. Let's rise up and pray. Examine your life. Now if you've been one of those um, prayer warriors that will cast out devils, but you are living in immorality with women, living on dangerous ground. You're one of those people that will pray for the sake and yet you are covetous. You have the love of money, you're living on dangerous ground. You are one of those people that will offer to cook at the miracle convention, will offer to work at the miracle convention, but you have familiar spirit, you are living on dangerous ground. But you give yourself to the Lord, you repent of your sin. If you are not an AFL member, but you are living, you are still with a secret society, you need to repent and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ completely. To the Lord Jesus Christ completely. So that you'll be counted as part of the people of God. Be counted as part of the people of God. Let's not deceive ourselves. Make sure that you are totally repented from sin. You are totally free from sin. Because without holiness no man shall see the Lord. Is your life changed? Are you free from the occult? Are you free from familiar spirit?